channel. Today we are continuing on our cockpit overhead, everything explained series of videos here. We are going to continue down the overhead and now we are going to talk about the flight control computer push buttons. Now, I want you guys to understand that during an oral examination in real world or a, or a type ride in the Airbus aircraft, the flight control and fly-by-wire laws of the aircraft are going to be the bulk of your check ride. You're going to be talking a lot about these push buttons. This video is not a thorough examination of each flight control computer. I am here basically just to tell you what are the functions behind each switch and what is the different switch positions you may come across. Now in the TOLUS aircraft alone, I have had several failures, random failures, where I had to manipulate my flight control push buttons. Not a big deal. Hopefully if you watch this video and you get one of those failures, you'll have a little bit better understanding of what is going on on your aircraft for flight simulation. Before we jump into what are the computers and how many computers we have, let's first talk about their names. They are abbreviated. We have ELAX, SEX, and FAX. You'll notice on the captain's overhead here, we only have computers one. So we have one ELAC, one SEC, one FAC. Over on the first officer side, we have ELAC2, SEC2, FAC2, and also SEC3. So what are these ELACs and SECs? Let's go over the names. ELAC stands for Elevator Aileron Computer. SEC stands for Spoiler Elevator Computer. FAC stands for Flight Augmentation Computer. Let's talk about their basic functions of each one. Now, ELAC-1 and ELAC-2 are virtually identical. They are in place for redundancy. So ELACs control, normal pitch and roll, alternate pitch, direct pitch and roll, abnormal attitude, Aileron droop. Aileron droop is something we talked about in one of my pilot series videos about when the uh, when you deploy the flaps on the ground and you see those ailerons droop down to have a little bit better performance for takeoff. That is controlled by the ELAX. Acquisition of autopilot orders. So autopilot orders comes from your ELAC 1 and also ELAC 2. Those functions are interchangeable. We have two of them again for redundancy. Now as far as switch position goes, you can either have on with the black square or off with a illuminated off light. So <clears throat> these switches, as with all switches on the Airbus overhead, they're kind of, if you don't look at them right or not used to them, you may not really see what the actual position of the switch is. That's why it's nice to have this illumination of the off light there um, for the push button. Now you'll notice when I push it back in, I get a fault light. That is the only other display that you can get from this push button. The fault light will illuminate if there is a fault detection within that flight control computer or during ELAC power-up test. So it will last eight seconds. Now it can also be triggered during a transient swap if it lasts more than 25 milliseconds, I believe. So that a transient swap is, let's say you go from external power over to APU power. Oops, lost a little bit of my lighting there. If you go from external power over to APU power, sometimes you get that click and you get that power transient. Sometimes your ELACs may uh, reboot up and you'll get that um, fault light there. So those are your ELAC computers. Moving right down the line now to SEC, or the Spoiler Elevator Computer. So we have SEC 1, SEC 2, we're going to talk about SEC 3 here in a minute. But SEC 1 and SEC 2, let's go over those. The Spoiler Elevator Control Computers will perform the following functions for you in the aircraft. Normal roll by controlling of the spoilers, speed brakes and ground spoilers, Alternate pitch, this is for SEC 1 and SEC 2 only. Direct pitch, SEC 1 and SEC 2 only. Direct roll and abnormal attitude. So you can see there's definitely some functions there really dealing with the spoilers, hence the name Spoiler Elevator Computer. Same switch positions as your fax, you have on and off. Now during any failure of the computer uh, components, you will get a fault light. That fault light will extinguish if the associated computer is turned off. All right, moving down the line, let's talk about FAC1, and then we're gonna circle back to FAC3, oh, I'm sorry, SEC3. All right, so FAC1, the flight augmentation computer. Think tail portion of the airplane when you look at your FACs. Normal roll, coordinating turns, and dampening Dutch roll. So 
during normal roll, it's using its computers to eliminate Dutch roll and keeping the aircraft coordinated. So you don't have to step on the rudders like you do with your conventional 172 or light GA aircraft when you're flying around. You don't really have to do that in the Airbus thanks to our flight augmentation computer. Also, rudder trim, rudder travel limit, and alternate yaw. So alternate yaw is a, is a sub, sub function of a normal flight control law. If you go into alternate law, we still have yaw protection um, with our flight augmentation computers. Now, that's fact one, same positions as before, on, off, and you don't necessarily see a fault light there during a reset unless there is a problem with the FAC. Then you will have a fault light You'll be asked to turn it off, most likely by the ECAM. That will turn off the fault light, and then you would contact maintenance and continue on or do whatever you have to do. All right, so break away here for a little real-world scenario that just happened to me on my last flight out. So we were in an Airbus A321, taxiing out of Dallas-Fort Worth. Started up engine number one. We were light. We were rolling out, going down towards runway 17 right there. And on the taxi out, I noticed we had a rudder system two fault, or I believe it was rudder trim system two fault, something like that. Ecam message on the lower ecam. I looked over and said, why don't we fire up engine number two, see if that fixes it. Sometimes in the Airbus, when you do a single engine taxi or any type of engine start, sometimes power transfers just don't work right, and sometimes a, a simple uh, engine start or power transfer can fix the problem. So I said, fire up engine two. Let's go ahead and see what uh, what happens. So get the engines, the second engine started, same thing. The message is still there on the lower ECAM. We've got a rudder trim system to fault message and we can't take off with that. So we go ahead and consult our company manuals. Nothing there for that. It basically just says crew awareness and that our rudder trim system two is faulted. We've got multiple rudder trim systems on the aircraft, so it's not a huge deal. But because we are on the ground, you cannot take off or operate an aircraft with any inoperable equipment without uh, going through the proper steps and going through maintenance. So because we're on the ground, I want to go ahead and find a good place to park the airplane, call maintenance control, get them on the phone, and then we'll walk through a procedure. Now, maintenance was suggesting, you know, you could shut down both engines, restart everything. But since we had everything ready to go, I was like, is there anything else we can do before shutting them down? Typically, I like to use that as a last resort, you know, because it takes time, it takes fuel. Um, sometimes it's a little bit simpler to do maybe a circuit breaker reset or something along those lines. But you don't want to just go ahead and start pushing buttons in the cockpit on your own. You have to do everything systematically from direction or, you know, following direction from a maintenance uh, control representative. So he said, yeah, why don't we do a FAC to a reset? So that made sense to me because we're looking at rudder trim system two. I know that the FACs or the flight augmentation computers control our rudder travel and rudder trim. So FAC two would be rudder trim two. We're just going to do a simple computer reset. Simple as going up there, turning off FAC two, wait a couple seconds, put fact two back online and sure enough that cleared up the problem nothing to do there just make a little uh, reference in the, in the logbook and on our way we went so I just thought that was a little ironic you know we're getting ready to do a uh, flight uh, control push button video here for you and then on my very next flight out I actually have to put that to use and recycle the fact to computer so nothing serious that's kind of one of those messages where you might be a passenger in the back and the airplane comes to a stop and hear the captain get on the uh, radio and he's like hey ladies and gentlemen we're gonna have to park the airplane here we're going to do a quick reset of the computer and then we should hopefully be on our way after that. So that's kind of what's going on behind the scenes from the cockpit when you hear that message from, uh, you know, when you hear that message as a passenger. So just thought I would share that little story with you guys. All right, let's circle back to sec three. I know we kind of, we talked about all the other ones. We skipped sec three. Now sec three is kind of a special computer. When, you, when we look at SEC 3, I want you to think mostly spoiler control for SEC 3. And essentially what the functions of SEC 3 are, normal roll by controlling the spoilers, so spoiler use during normal roll, speed brakes and ground spoilers, direct roll and abnormal attitude. So. If you lose your other flight control or your other secs, like sec one and sec two go out, sec three is still there and you can manipulate the aircraft with spoiler control with one flight spoiler and one ground spoiler on each wing. That is what sec three is given. It is given a one ground spoiler and one flight spoiler on each wing and it is kind of there for your uh, third redundancy, if you will. 
and the flight controls. So as we go over these flight control computers, you'll notice I'm kind of repeating myself with, with the same functions from different computers. And that is by design by Airbus. So that means not any one system is dependent on one flight control computer. You can have a failure of any combination of these computers here and you will still have control of your aircraft. That's what makes this airplane really well thought out is the multiple different redundancies that are built into the aircraft should you lose some flight control computers. All right, so now that we've gone over the flight control push buttons, let's take a look at our flight control page here on the lower ECAM. And you'll notice on the lower ECAM, if you pull up your flight controls, we have a depiction of some of our flight control computers. We've got ELAC 1 and 2, green means system is operating normally, and we have all three of our spoiler elevator control computers, SEX 1, 2, and 3, all on the green. Now, the only other computer that's not depicted here is our fax or our flight augmentation computer we know that our flight augmentation computers though by being good pilots controls almost all of our rudder type operation on the airplane so we've got our rudder trim rudder travel limit rudder travel limit alternate law and normal roll coordination so that is all all of this down here is going to be controlled by our fax or our flight augmentation computers these little green pegs here on either side of the rudder. Those are rudder travel limit indicators. And I talked about them a long time ago in one of my pilot series videos. But what happens is essentially as the aircraft is going faster and faster through the air, it does not want you to deflect the rudder to full. If you deflect the rudder to full, you can stress overstress the rudder and cause catastrophic damage to the airplane. So as the aircraft speed increases, these little brackets will get closer and closer to the center position here on our rudder. Now, the reason for that being is, let's say you're flying along at Mach 7, 8, and you go to stretch your legs and you step on the rudder all the way over to the left, the rudder is not going to be traveled more than whatever is being limited here by these rudder travel limit indicators. These are controlled by our flight augmentation computers. That is rudder travel limit. That's what it is. We know that we also have rudder trim and alternate yaw, all part of the flight augmentation computer system. So all of this stuff down here is really going to be your fax computers, re referencing your fax computers. Now, should you have a flight control computer failure? Let's say we lose SEC2. Look at that. Now our SEC2 has gone amber, indicating that it is off or not working. Go ahead and turn it back on. It should reset. There it goes. SEC2 is back on, clears the cam, and you're back to square one. All right, so that is the flight control computers. I know that there's not too much there for you for sim purposes, but now when you look at your overhead and you're doing your cold and dark startup, you at least know a little bit more about what each push button does and what each computer does behind that switch. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll catch you again here real soon.